guys, I'm at an old train unit here. Complain that there's no cooling. I do believe the compressor is not running. We're gonna open it up and take a look and see if our capacitor is to blame. I think we'll test and make sure it runs properly if that is the case, or we'll locate the real problem. As you can see, guys, there is a relatively new capacitor. Actually, I think I put that one in a few years ago. And a 521 hard start, which I replaced the original start kit when it became damaged. So we're gonna take this capacitor off and see if it's any good. And if it is, we're gonna go down to the compressor and take a look there and see what the issue is. I did find some oil down here, not refrigerant oil, but oil from a capacitor like castor oil. I'm not sure if that was from before or this time, but we'll double check. We have a capacitor that's 45.5 and what we have it registered as is 36 and 4.2. So it is bad. I'm kind of surprised it wasn't starting though at all. It really is it's weak but it's not super weak so we're going to change it out put a new one in there and see if that doesn't do the trick uh, also check to see if we have thermal overload on the compressor okay guys i have the new capacitor hung up in place a little bit of plumber strap i was using some like inch galvanized strap and just drilling holes in it but i saw a couple of the guys using the plumber strap it seemed like an obvious change to make so i went ahead and switched over to that the holes are already in it and i seldom seem to find a case where you can't just line up the holes uh, you never have to drill your own holes. It looks like they're pretty conveniently placed. So it's anchored in place. I'm going to turn things on to see if it'll come on or else we might have to investigate farther. Well, I don't hear any compressor running. Let's see how much amperage the start capacitor is giving out. Perhaps it is bad. This is our 96 amp reading when the compressor tried to start. My belief is that the start capacitor is not functional. Either that or the start relay is not working. So we're gonna replace the assembly and go ahead and get this thing going. Hopefully that's all we'll need to do. And then we can start it up and monitor the refrigerant pressure. Let me go to make sure I have one. I believe I do, and we can go ahead and put it on. I was about to remove the rest of our star kit here. And I took our star wire coming off from the run capacitor going to the compressor and wanted to ohm it to the other two wires that are located here on the contact of the run and common. Now there should be some amount of continuity, uh, usually a few ohms, between this wire and those two. Uh, more so, lower amount of ohms to the common than to the run. But it was open line, so I had to figure out why that is. I'm going to take the top off and take a look down at the compressor to see if we have some burned off wires. I didn't want to go too far ahead as far as putting a new star kit in when actually that might not be the issue. I went down inside the compressor compartment and found that there was a burned off wire. The start winding wire was burned off. I'm trying to look for it on the ground to show you guys. I actually threw the wire away, sorry. I put one of the little compressor saver quick lug wires on there for the start terminal and ran it back up here because there's a little bit of debris on the terminal and I couldn't actually get a regular steak on back on there. So we're going to try to start it back up with our fingers crossed and see what happens here. I left the old start relay on there thinking that it was probably just that wire. That was the issue. We're going to test it out and see how it works. And hopefully this thing will get up and running here in a second. All right, guys, but the system came back online. It's a miracle. Let it run for a little while ago. Place the probes. Our compressor's pulling 14 amps. So right now she's working. I think she's probably on bar at time, but she's working. All right, guys, as you see, we have a pretty good BTU output for a three and a half ton machine. Put out 42,600 BTUs, going all around. Temperature split at 19.4, slightly above the projected temperature split. So we're doing pretty well. Again, we have a 12 sear machine, so our head pressure is a little bit lower than the 10 sear profile. So it's actually performing very well for me. I mean, I just had to wire back from death. So. Typically when wires start burning off the compressor, there can be an issue there. But hopefully this one will be going on for years to come. But it looks pretty good right now. Some of our target superheat, target subcooling, head pressure, target suction pressure. There's the information from the probes here at the bottom. Our return air dry bulb was 81, wet bulb 68, supply air dry bulb, and supply air wet bulb. Some of our other measurements from the suction line. So we look like we're doing pretty well on this one. I'm going to button it back up here in a minute and go let them know that I brought their machine back to death. And hopefully it'll stick around for a little while. I bleed for my money Day in and day out I try to give you you deserve But I'm just a college
it's dropout Who gives his weeks to break the mean Falls in the tide line Is washed out to sea If I weren't a worker